Hey guys, this is Nick, and thanks for tuning into Long Island War Gaming. And this is uh, Bat Rep 19. This is one of three battle reports that I'm bringing you from a tournament I did over the weekend at Mighty Titans Hobbies uh, in Lanning, New Jersey. And this is a game against the Sustainable Center. Um, me and Anthony both got matched up round one. And this is Blood and Glory, which uh, it's modified. Blood and Glory essentially. Um, only in the terms of the victory conditions. So I have to break my enemy for 10 tournament points, and then uh, if I get broken first, I have an opportunity to deny him 5 more points, or gain 5 points myself by breaking him. Um, and then I can also get 3 points for getting my enemy, uh, my general into the enemy deployment zone, and then keep 4 to 2 unit within 6 inches of the center, and have all my characters um, that are casters survive. So we'll see how that goes. Now I apologize, the first couple pictures I realized, or didn't realize I had on the wrong focus setting, so they're a little bit blurry. So just um, for Anthony's deployment, we've got pistoliers and behind that a cannon, uh, a steam tank, demigriffs, a luminarch or a hurricaneum, I don't know, uh, probably the hurricaneum. I think that's the, whichever one gives plus one to hit. Um, to nearby units, that's the one that's there. I don't have my Empire book on me, nor do I really remember. Uh, there's 13 Inner Circle Knights with two heroes behind a large unit of Halberdiers, in which the caster is in the Halberdier unit. And there's more Demigriffs, and like the opposite side, Pistoliers in front of the cannons. From my side, left to right, Rat Dart Slaves. Help and Abomination, Doom Wheel, um, Clan Rats, uh, Storm, uh, Clan Rats with Grace and Bell, Plague Monks with the Engineer with the Lodestone, more Rat Darts behind them is a BSB Bunker Unit. Um, then there is Storm Roman Sleeves, another Rat Dart, and then the Lightning Cannon in the back there. Here's a quick shot down the middle of the battlefield. You can see there's a forest chilling out in the middle, which is, you know, annoying. And then um, the first clear picture we have here is Skaven turn one. And I actually uh, get turn one, even though Anthony was able to get all of his stuff down before me. So that's nice. Um, with my movement, I just march everything up. The um, the bell, I always have to remember that there, it will be a good chance that the bell on the first turn will move forward another six inches. So I already have the bell way too far up. Uh, this is something that I learned, or something I realized the first game. I'm just letting it go too far forward. Really, the Grace here needs to be protected a little bit better. Um, so in future games, I have the Grace here a little bit um Protected, protect a little bit more. Um, the warp fire thrower next to the Clarent unit should have been in front of the bell unit, and that's my intentions when I made the list. I just forget to do it, or I just deploy it incorrectly. But it's supposed to be in front there to prevent, um, you know, certain things from getting in easily. For example, the demigriffs. But also, if the demigriffs decide to charge the warp fire thrower, I would get off a freaking counter shot, which would hit 2-3 to three demigriffs, strength 5, minus 2 armor save, d3 multiple wounds. That's what I should have done. That's uh, the first error of the game that I will throw out there against myself. Um, Dreaded 13th knocks out a bunch of halberdiers, which is nice. Um, not sure why... Oh! I didn't use Plague. I'm like, why would I not use Plague? I didn't use Plague because I didn't roll it up. And I didn't roll up any doubles, so I had to use the Dread 13th to kill out some infantry. Um, I believe... Uh, I forget what other spells I got. I know I've got Cloud of Corruption, which I wanted to use really badly, but the only enemy unit in range is the Demigriffs, and everything else would have been hitting my own units. At this point, I figured it would be a bad decision, but looking back at it now, I should have done it because those demigriffs end up causing a lot of trouble later in the game. 
the d6 strength 5 no armor save attacks probably would have helped me a little bit but uh oh well what else uh the bell moves itself forward a little bit um the lightning cannon kills um some knights uh, the lightning cannon rolls too well which is an issue it actually shoots over the knights with its um with its energy shot to the point where it's off the board uh, so I rolled a 10 off the board which is fine for the second roll because I got three knights at strength 10 so I killed three knights but if I rolled an 8 or a 6 which still would have been fine I would have gotten a small template over the knight unit and killed a whole bunch more which would have been very important there are um, there's three points of fortitude in that unit there's a banner uh, actually maybe there's four I think the general is in there I think the BSB is in there, and then I think there's a unit uh, standard in there. So I think there's four fortitude in that unit. So I was kind of upset that the cannon rolled so highly. Usually that's a good thing, but I was kind of hoping the small template would land right on the center of the unit. So um, so that's it for scheme turn one. And like I said, the bell moves itself all the way up. So Empire turn one... Um, the rat dart gets charged, you know, I could have fled, but I decided just whatever. Um, the bell gets charged by the demigriffs, no surprise there. Um, the hurricanum, I believe it was, charges the doom wheel, and then the steam tank charges the help and abomination. So, uh, with all those successful charges, everything was able to get in, and essentially Anthony was just trying to tie up all my stuff right here. And then, uh, oh, there's something I forgot to mention for Skaven Turn 1, um, which is why the Pistoliers are fleeing. Uh, the slaves on both flanks charge the Pistoliers to just run them away, which is which is fine. Um, I know somebody commented on how far back the slaves were the whole game. They weren't that far back the whole game. It's just they made the Pistoliers run. That's why they had a failed charge and they were chilling back there, which is fine because... One of the Pistolier units never rallies, but that's a perfect match, 100 points versus 100 points, and uh, my slaves got those Pistoliers fleeing, so whatever, they served their purpose. But back to Empire turn one, um, Bell gets charged, the tank, everything there, lovely. Um, like I said, that Pistolier unit leaves the battlefield. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happens in Magic. I don't really think it was a crazy magic game early on for Anthony. I know later on he gets some nice uh, hexes off on my guys, but that's not until like turn four or five. The Pistoliers up top there rally, which is fine. Um, the Lightning Cannon gets taken out by uh, the other cannons. Uh, the first one did nothing, the second one was able to get the cannon out, so that's very important, especially with the knights and uh, just the knights running up. I mean, if I can get another shot off from the knights, that would have been huge, but you gotta take that lightning cannon out, so he's able to do that. The giant rats die and run, and the demigrifts run the storm vermin. Um, uh, the Tank takes a wound, and the Help and Abomination takes two, um, which is fine. And then the Demigriffs are able to destroy the Gracier. Uh, that's why the Bell is now turned around at that point. Um, directed all attacks against him, so that sucks. Um, like I said, I need to protect him a little bit more. That's my own fault. And even with his ward save and scam and everything, he wasn't able to survive the, I don't know, uh, 12 attacks at the from the demigriffs. So. Um, and then on to Skaven turn 2. The rat dart charges down the hill to the... Um, to the Pistoliers. Uh, we were joking about this because, I mean, I don't know, we use terrain a lot 
when we play, so I just confirmed that, that was considered a hill, so I get a plus one combat res just for charging down that, which is nice. Um, and what do we have next? I make a risky move by sending my BSB in against the Demigriffs. And uh, I send the slaves in for shits and giggles. Um, I do a lot of shits and giggles stuff when I'm playing with my friends and I need to start making decisions that make more sense in tournament play. Um, uh, really, the Storm Vermin would have done a little bit better chilling there. Uh, I pretty much give combat res by sending slaves in, but... Uh, if I lose combat, then the slaves could blow up. I mean, all that funny game of stuff, but um, the plus one combat res from the charge really doesn't make a difference because the slaves are just free food for the demigriffs. But the flank charge also helps in getting the BSB in there. So there's just a lot of combat res coming in there. Um, I just kind of wanted to go all in on that little area. And then the plague monks charge in also on the halberdiers in a manner which they will not be in the forest because I do not feel like dealing without having ranks. Not that they are not going to do well anyway. Um, what else? Um, the Hurricaneum gets knocked out. Um, and the Hurricane is one of the reasons why the Demigriffs did so well because a lot of their hits got through just based on the fact that they were all at plus one to hit. Um, but I needed to get that thing out of the way. The <laughs> the giant rats, the 23-point giant rats, um, are able to kill Pistolier and break them and run them down. So that's lovely. Uh, between the slaves, the halberdiers, not halberdiers, the slaves, the storm vermin, and the naked clan rats with BSP were able to kill a demigriff, probably with the help of the hero. Uh, my hero in return takes a hit despite his 4 plus board save, so demigriffs are just a lot better than I'm used to or realizing. Uh, I've only played against them once or twice when Rich used them, and I'm pretty sure I was able to kill them before they got to me, but when there's two units of them, um, double trouble. And um, essentially, they are able to break them. I do not pursue with the BSB unit. I uh, reform with the BSB unit in hopes to do the same thing with the second Demigriff unit, so they're facing that one, so I can charge in there through the forest. Um, I'm unable to catch the Demigriff, so they're running in that way. And then, what I got here, the Plague Monks <laughs> essentially just destroy um, the Halberdiers. I do not use the Plague Banner, it's not time for it. Um, not that it will really help me against armor save one up, um, inner circle knights, but they do run in there because they're frenzied, so they have to overrun. And then, uh, I think it's a tie. No, I end up doing two more wounds to the tank, which is awesome. Uh, the slaves are up there now. They're making their way around to go, I don't know, maybe some point flank charge the knights just for combat res purposes because I need to kill that unit for fortitude reasons um, or maybe go kill the caster which I mean yeah whatever um, and then what else so Empire turn to uh, the Demigriffs rally which is nice um, the I don't know what happens during magic but uh, the Hell Pit Abomination actually gets killed by the Steam Tank during combat. However, um, um, I know that's... Yeah, no, it happens during movement. I mean, there's a couple times we did it out of phase. It happens during movement, those grind attacks. Um, this way you can't get combat bonus during combat. But uh, we did it out of order a couple times, which to me isn't a big deal. But I know some players that might cause an issue. And the breaking or the destroyed um, Hell Pit Abomination causes the slaves to panic and turn and run away. So, for Skate in turn 3, I think uh, the next big error I make is having the 
Well, let's go first to charges. The I do do that charge with the um, BSB chieftain into the flank of the demigriffs. I mean, last time I took a wound from one demigriff, there's a good chance I'll take another one. I'm just hoping with my ward save. Hopefully, I'll do a little bit better. And um, the, I mean that. The error that I think is, is I should have sent the Doom Wheel into that combat also instead of against the Steam Tank. Now, I was kind of worried about the Steam Tank shooting some stuff or causing some issues. However, the Steam Tank has nothing to do with winning this game. It has nothing to do with the fortitude and the scenario. So really, I should have sent the Doom Wheel in on as a front charge against the Demigriffs. In shooting, I could have done some Warp Lightning stuff, which... I also tried against the cannon, uh, against the tank, and I rolled twos, so I didn't wound it. But either way, the impact hits at strength six would have helped against the demigriff combat uh, before they even got to strike any of my heroes or the bell. So that is a pretty big error, I think. Um, and then the BSB does get killed by the demigriff, so I just lost a whole bunch of fortitude, not a whole bunch, but I mean more fortitude, and then just a little bit more grinding down with the clam rats, uh, the rat ogre decides to do nothing in most of these combats, uh, the doom wheel does its thing, I think it might inflict a, a few more wounds in the steam tank, but it has a bunch, so that's not an issue, um, and my clam rats break, and that's that. And then you can also see from my previous turn, I did move my storm vermin up, not to charge the uh, demigriffs, just to get them in the way so they cannot flank the plague monks. But in turn, Empire turn three. He charges the demigriffs into the storm vermin, which is fine. Uh, the grind attack kills the hell pit abomination, which is nice. And so that's really it. I mean, the plague monks in combats in the combat phase that I forgot to mention. Just, I mean. Maybe dual wounds, even with the Plague Banner, there's just, I mean, such high armor save. I tried to do some wounds on the heroes, but nothing really happened. Um, in Anthony's turn, he was able to get some uh, minus one str uh, toughness onto the Plague Monks, and then minus one strength, I believe, onto the Storm Vermin. Um... The Storm Vermin just grind down. The Storm Vermin are essentially really useless in this game. Perhaps the Razor Banner would be helpful because then they would be at minus two armor save. But even with that, I mean, the Demigriffs have a pretty good save. It's just when your minus one armor penetration brings the opponent from one up armors to two up armors, it makes no difference. It doesn't really do anything. Um, so really just to close out this game, his caster runs around a little bit. Um, the um, slaves go and fight the tank, nothing really happens, my slaves flank charge the demigriff, um, I mean, what the good thing about this is, is it gives me, it starts me with four combat uh, bonus, uh, the three ranks, and then the flank charge. So really five, so it's not that hard to kill five slaves though to make up for that. Um, the Plague Monks get grinded down, I slowly close in on the caster with my, um, with my rat darts. The Warp Fire Thrower tries to shoot at the caster instead of charging him, and I either misfire or roll too low. I think I roll too low. It doesn't get to him. And uh, everything starts fleeing and breaking towards the end of the game. 
uh, the demigriffs slowly grind down the bell, and uh, I do get the fire thrower to at some point hit the knights. Uh, I forgot that it was a panic test, so we didn't do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure even if the unit panicked, they would have rallied in a subsequent turn. But uh, that was really kind of the end of the game. The um, Grace here needs to not be up that far. That's you know something I gotta work on. Uh, Cloud of Corruption, I should have done the first round, but if I had held the Grace here back a little bit, Cloud of Corruption would have also just helped me in general in terms of if I had that Cloud of Corruption bubble when the tank and the demigrift and everything rushed up. Um, the Hurricane, the Demigriffs, and the tank would have suffered, hopefully, you know, D6, uh, no armor save attacks at strength 5, I think it is. So, that would have been useful if I made good use of it, but... And the Red Ogre on the Bell did shit, which kind of sucks, but... Um, so, good, fun game. Um, Blood and Glory is always cool, so I essentially walk away with zero points from this because I wasn't able to get... The primary, of course, I was unable to um, deny Anthony five points by not breaking, by not letting me break him. So he got extra points when I got none, and there was some bonus objectives that I didn't get to see any points from. So that is that. Uh, it's always a uh, cool to be able to play another YouTube channel. Um, so hopefully we'll do this again in the future, whether it's at another tournament or if I make my way out to him or vice versa. And then hopefully I can start getting my list a little bit stronger. Uh, one thing that Anthony did point out to me is, is once my War Machines and my uh, Help Abomination and Cannons are either in combat or taken out, there's really no punch to this army. Um, I know I have in the past, at least in 3,000 point games, but even at 2,500, did the thing where I just had a crap load of units in the Bell unit and just kind of run that forward. Uh, maybe I should start doing that again. Or another option is, is ditch the bell, get the grace here on foot, and keep him alive, and just uh, break a plague furnace or something, so, uh, maybe, I gotta figure out how to work rat ogres, I mean, I, I've always used them, but I just feel like, in a tournament, they could be taken out so easily, even by shitty archers, because they have no armor, but they do pack a lot of punch, so, but, uh, yep, yeah, that's it, no more really thoughts on this game, so, um, hope you guys enjoyed, and then uh, hopefully I'll get game two out as soon as possible. Thanks, guys.